Good evening. This is CTV News for Wednesday, December 9th. I'm Byron Scott. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, community members and joint county leaders to celebrate Prince George's newest police station in Fort Washington. The highly anticipated facility in District 7 has been in development for 13 years. A ceremony was held today to mark the occasion. Rochelle Metzger has more. The new District 7 police station here in Fort Washington has been in the works for years. Just a few months ago, its fate and funding were uncertain, but today county leaders held a ribbon cutting ceremony, opening its doors to residents who say it's been a long time coming. We've worked for over 15 years to get this uh, police station here. Dozens of residents file in to tour the 19,000 square foot facility. Nearly finished officials say the District 7 station will help improve police service countywide. Public safety in South County has been a major concern for longtime residents like Ron Weiss. We're so far away from the police station in Knox and Hill, it takes a long time for police to respond to uh, our calls for service down here. This building helps us exponentially to better take care of our communities. Chief Mark McGall says overall crime in the surrounding communities has dropped 18 percent this year. Resident Lainey Moorhead says she hopes having more police nearby will continue that trend. I hope it'll discourage uh, would-be robbers and so forth in the neighborhood to see a station right here, you know, because that's really a deterrent for a lot of would-be uh, Criminals. County leaders side by side for a ribbon cutting, standing in stark contrast to just months before when a bitter budget battle put the status of the $14 million project in jeopardy. Ultimately, you end up having to get together to work things out point blank. I mean, you can't ignore things that have to be considered, and this was one of those things where the time had come. Bottom line, they want to know if they're going to be safe um, when uh, MGM opens with Tanger opening, you know, what's the response time? And we can honestly tell them that it's going to be a shorter response time. It's comforting to have this in our neighborhood. For now, 30 officers have been assigned to the station. Eventually, officials say they hope to expand that number to 50. This station will be fully manned. Uh, that's a given. That's, that's fact. You know, we have a class in now. When that class graduates in February, we'll have the manpower to fully staff this station so it won't be a concern at all. Now, this was more of a ceremonial event. The station is not yet fully operational. It's scheduled to officially open January 25th. That's when officers will run their first calls for service. Reporting in Fort Washington, Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. And the new station is at the only 11,000 block of Fort Washington Road again, scheduled to open officially at the end of next month. Well, the results of Maryland's new Partnership for Assessment of Readiness in College and Careers tests are in, and it doesn't look good. Less than half of Prince George's elementary and middle school students passed the PARC test, which was administered for the first time in the spring of 2015. Only about 15 percent of students in grades 3 through 8 met the mathematics standards, and around 40 percent met the language and literacy. Officials say a low score does not mean a child is failing to learn. Well, you know, we have a strategic plan in place, and with that plan, efforts like new literacy coaches. We also have a new Saturday school that we've just implemented this year, which will help students with their math, and the literacy coaches will help with the reading. And so with these things in place, this is things that are, will help with those challenges to help our students improve their scores. School officials, of course, hoping the test results increase by 2016-2017 school year. While supporters of yesterday's U.S. Supreme Court decision on redistricting are celebrating today, the nation's top court ruled unanimously that Shapiro versus McManus should have been heard by a three-judge panel rather than a lone judge who threw out the case. That there will be um, an opportunity to have the case de decided on the merits. Uh, whether or not the plaintiffs will be successful is really up in the air. I mean, it's really difficult to challenge um, districts, especially based on um, partisan uh, gerrymandering or claims of party partisan gerrymandering. So they, the plaintiffs still have a, a tough hill to climb, but the good thing is they'll have the opportunity to make the arguments. 
Governor Hogan is expected to introduce legislation during the upcoming session, creating an independent redistricting commission for the state of Maryland. Well, the first of six police officers to go on trial in the Freddie Gray case takes the stand in his own defense. According to the Washington Post, William Porter testified he didn't call for a medic for Gray because Gray was unable to give him a reason why he needed one. Porter also testified he didn't see any signs of injury when he checked on Gray while he was in the back of a police van. The defense's first witness today was a forensic pathologist who told the court Gray's death was not a homicide but an accident. Gray died on April 12th while in police custody. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott.